Welcome back. All right, we got clean gas, but we got a little bit of a no cranky problem in our electrical system on our Camaro. So we're gonna use this really cool Power Probe 3 in order to test and make sure everything's working. Now, first thing, we're just gonna plug it in, plug it up to the battery, and make sure that we have a good battery. Yep, that looks nice. Now, this is a great tool. It's got a nice LED on it. You can check continuity. You can make sure that you have good voltage. You can actually power things. You push the positive, you can power things. Like you can power a light, you can power a switch. You can do all kinds of good stuff with this tool. And it's got a nice long cord. So if you wanna work all the way around, hey Sam. Thanks buddy, See I what's going it. on inside, battery's good. Thanks. You know, that's the first thing, when anytime you have an electrical problem, before you start diagnosing it, you wanna find a voltage up, make sure your battery's hot. Now, here's how this thing works. We got no crank position, power comes out, goes through the key, down to the neutral switch, out to the starter. So I can check with our power probe, I can go in, and by the way, you have a button here you can put, so you have an audible alert. You can see I've got continuity there. Now here's the next thing. Take, it's got a switch, flip the switch, tells you you got battery voltage there. I'll go into these purple wires, they've been the same forever in a GM car. Oh, oh, there Look you go. Look at that, turn the key on, back in here. Ah, all right, cool. We so all we need is a uh, neutral safety switch, we're good to go. Yeah, but we're not gonna buy one of those in a local parts store. <laughs> I bet little Sam could get us one. Oh yeah, oh. hey, and he lives right near Rick's first generation Camaro. I'll call him. We'll call him. All right, by the way, Power Probe comes in a blow molded case, all the adapters, everything you need. This is a handy tool. We're gonna take a break, we'll be right back. Hey Sam, I appreciate you bringing this thing by. Man, look at this. No problem. Hey, hey awesome. you're playing with electricity, that's dangerous. Very Got a cool. Perfect switch. Right. I get some uh, tools and put it in. When he's messing with electricity, you need to help him. <laughs> hey, do you know have a headlight out? Motor and a headlight? With those wires in there, I hadn't checked anything. Okay. But I know you can fix it up. You showing yeah. everybody how to test some headlights and motors? You know these babies? Yeah, they're a wonderful tool. Now, first thing we're doing, we're, we're checking continuity. And what continuity is, we're making sure we have a continuous circuit all the way through the headlight. And if you check any, any circuit in a DC system, it's coming from the battery, it's going through whatever you're using and coming out. So by testing this, you're making sure that nothing is broken. Getting a continuous circuit will help you know that more than likely it's going to be a good part. And you always want to do that before you put power to it to see whether the circuit's even good or not. Right. And another great deal about this tool is that we're checking continuity, we hit the power button, we're sending power through, that's a good sign. Well, let's show them how to test the motor too. Okay, so the motor, now this is a, a we just all we have to do is reverse the polarity on the motor to go one direction or the other. And Okay, we're getting, it's continuous, that's good. Now we just hit power and... Yeah. There's close. <laughs> it's kind of moving. Let's open it back up. It doesn't seem that great. Now hopefully where you got that neutral safety switch, they've got a couple of these too. There we go. Fair. And you see, look at this thing. I mean, that's a teeny little motor. Yeah, it's teeny, it's got plastic gears. It seems a little wore out on the inside. Have you tested this one to see if it's good? No, uh, I don't think so. This one's not working. So let's check and see. Actually, let's do the headlight. Put it on there. Okay, I can tell we're not getting a continuous circuit. Now let's hit power. Nothing. Nothing. So, and that headlight and doesn't look very bad, good either. Right? Now, if you look at the box, another cool thing, you can plug this right into your cigarette lighter. That's a nice feature. Plus, now this thing came with 20 feet. And I'm hooked into the battery in the car right now. So you got one car, you can go all the way to the other car. Comes with another second set of 20 feet, 40 feet. And you can go just like this, just like we're doing. You're hooked into the car, you pull the part, you put it on the bench, bam, yep. sweet. It's a very wonderful tool. All right, Fuller, hop in there. I'm gonna need you to operate the key. What All are you right. doing, buddy? Well, I put in that neutral safety switch and now I took out the extension wires you were using. The good news is you can't put these together wrong. They're keyed. Even I can do this without making smoke. <laughs> now you use this all the time. Uh, tell me what you use them for mostly in your shop. We use them mostly for engine swaps. When we took, like for instance, we took an Audi, we took out a 180 horsepower four cylinder single turbo engine and put in a four year model newer V6 twin turbo 500 horsepower engine in it. So now we have to mate the room harness up with the engine harness. And the only way to do that when you have different colored wires is you have to go to the plugs that are open and start probing each one, turning them on to see what is being lit up, the tail lights, the parking lights, the reverse lights. So then now you can go on the other end of the harness and see what controls those p lights on the backside and connect them. And That's without it. that, you can't 
Well, here's the neat thing. Now, we've been playing with the positive side. You can see right here that the, the uh, little red light is on. If you go to the ground side, you get the green light. Okay, now with the audible tone, high pitch is positive, low pitch, that's great. So when you get to a place where you're probing, and guess what? You can't see it, can't you can see hear it, it. But you can hear it. All right, now, first thing I want to do is check the coil voltage. Turn the key on. Okay. And, of course, when you go over here, you should see this thing has a resistor circuit. All right, we're, let me shut this off. We're at 12.1 volt. Just bump the key a little bit. Okay. Because the points are open. There we go. And we get the points closed. We should see about 6 or 7 volts. Tap it again. Again, one more time. Yeah, there we go. 6.8 volts. So we're on the resistor circuit. You've got to have your points closed. So it'll go to ground. So that's in pretty good shape. But this thing really needs a lot of work. Look at these vacuum lines. Look at the AC system. It's an old R12 system. Yep. We need to put new hoses on here with crimped ends. Yeah, you never want to use these, these radiators. No, right. those aren't going to hold the pressure. Yeah. It's got an old POA valve in it. it. Works sort of like an orifice tube or an expansion valve. We need to replace that with a reproduction piece. Look at Flush this. Flush out the system. Look at this. And it looks like the heater core is broken because they yep. looped it. Yeah, they put a loop in the heater hose system where it goes from the pump to the heater back to the manifold. When you see that, to sure bet the heater core was leaking. Well, we got the dash out and the carpets out. We got half the glove box is out. We'll put a new heater core in this thing and that'll work. It's also a good idea to replace all the hoses. For instance, this PCV hose is as hard as can be. The PCV right. valve needs to be replaced. The brake booster hose needs to be replaced. It's starting to crush. Right. Go ahead and replace the radiator hoses as well on the radiator neck. You yeah. can see it's been corroded. It's been leaking from underneath the radiator. Is that kind so. of electrolysis from 20 years of sitting, it's a radiator is going to be eat up. So we'll put another radiator in it and so on. Right now what I want to do is I want to start it up and run it, clear its throat. It's been loaded up and thing hasn't run for a long time. We got it to start. I put in the neutral switch. It's working good. Has a little thermostatic spring in the manifold to open the choke. I want to warm it up. Then we can check timing, balance the carburetor, and make this thing run as good as we can. Go ahead and fire it up. There we go. Got a high idle. Yeah. I think we got a timing issue here, buddy. Sounds like it's misfiring, too. Oh, you can shut it off. You know, you saw the inside of the fuel tank. You can imagine what the inside of that carburetor looks like. And that quadrajet's pretty easy. We'll pull that off, strip it, throw it in the soak tank, put a kit in it, we'll make that thing work because I can't adjust it out. And while we got that off, it's a very good idea to go ahead and put some cap rotor and wires on this thing. Yeah. Set look, look at this right here. Yeah. You see that smoke when you shut it down? A nitrile float, it's leaking, it's, you know, dumping fuel. These plugs are going to be loaded up. It's a good idea while you have the plugs out to go ahead and do a compression test, and that'll give you the basic condition of the motor. Yep. So we've got a long way to go here, but the Camaro runs, which got brakes. Got a neutral switch, it goes in and out of gear. Hey, you know, change oil a couple of times. Listen, thanks for coming by, buddy. Anytime. Appreciate the help. Thanks for bringing us that part. Anytime. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and button this up. We'll come back, taking a break. We'll see you in the parts counter, so don't go away.